Today we're in Monroe to take a, a tour of Klondike cheese. I'm very proud the 51st Assembly District has more cheese factories than any other uh, assembly district in the state of Wisconsin. I'm part of the fourth generation, so my great-grandfather emigrated from Switzerland and became the cheesemaker at Klondike in 1925. And now my dad, both my uncles, uh, myself, my two cousins, and their spouses are in the business. So this is our feta plant. Um, we've been making feta since 1988. Every year it's been a growth category for us. And eventually we outgrew the old plant, and in 2001 my dad, we started this plant. My dad and uncle took the leap of faith, uh, invested pretty much all the money that we had into this plant, and uh, currently we're able to produce 110,000 pounds of feta a day. Luke, can you tell me about the automation of the plant and how it's utilized here? Yeah, so we have automation in various parts of the plant. Uh, where we identify where automation should really be installed is to make a better work environment for employees. We never automate to, to lose employees. Uh, we automate to actually uh, gain employees because if we can make more cheese and we can package more cheese, then we need more employees. Thanks, Luke, for showing me around the factory today. It's great to see uh, um, cheese being made. Um, we're a Wisconsin dairy state. Cheese is a state dairy product, so I really appreciate you showing me around today. Monroe is just one of the many places that makes the 51st Assembly District so great. From dairy cultures that make cheese, that drives economy, to the arts culture that defines downtown, I'm grateful to serve this beautiful area. After stopping at Klondike, I had the opportunity to tour the Monroe Arts Center where I met with Executive Director Kathy Hennessy and CEO of Colony Brands, John Bauman. Just last session, I worked to get a community match grant put in the budget to revitalize and expand the culture cornerstone of southwestern Wisconsin. And it was immediately matched by an individual, and it kicked off um, the fundraising start for where we are right now. This part of the building uh, was added in 1959, but it had fallen into disrepair and was not in use in any way. And actually there was some consideration that it should be torn down. Um, fortunately, we had a board who had a vision um, that we could turn this into a thriving part of the community for children. What we wanted to be able to do here was to take a more traditional art center where we had a beautiful music hall, wonderful building, and really see what we could do to expand in terms of who we were reaching. In this case, we wanted more people in terms of families, youth, etc., to feel really comfortable coming here because in that way, we can make this a better community to live in and really we can help give our children and our families a little bit of an edge in life. The fact that, you know, a fifth grader can have their artwork hung in a professional gallery um, and have to walk through that professional gallery to get here to see it um, is really, uh, striking. 